in today's video. Hi guys, welcome to this week's video. Before we start, make sure to subscribe if you are not and give a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Paratrachina longicornis, the world's most widespread tramp ant species. This small and dark colored ant species belongs to the Formicinae subfamily and the Paratrachina genus. Para, a Greek prefix used scientifically to accentuate abnormalities, and trichina from Greek trichinos, meaning hair, longi, meaning long, and cornis, referring to horns. Hence, the hairy longhorn ant would be a good translation to its scientific name. The genus Paratrichina is composed of six ant species, of which only one seems to have been spread around the world. The longhorn crazy ant owes to the ease with which it is spread by human activities and the ability to survive even in the most artificial of environments. This species has literally been spread around the planet, being found in almost every urban center in the tropics. The black crazy ant is one of the most common ant species intercepted in cargo by quarantine officials. It's thought to be of either Asian or African origin, with one researcher arguing that uh, black crazy ant is native to Southeast Asia, because it is only in this region that black crazy ants can be found in native and disturbed habitats, found even in extremely remote forest reserves. Paratrochina longicornis are also known as black crazy ants or longhorn crazy ants. The name crazy ant arises from its characteristic behavior, that is to run erratically in rapid movements when disturbed. Black crazy ant is a monomorphic ant species having a size range of 2.3 to 3 mm long, and workers are brown to blackish in color with faint bluish iridescence. Their body has long, coarse, well scattered whitish setae or hairs. They do not have sting, however, they might bite an enemy and curve its abdomen forward to inject a formic acid secretion into the wound. The ratio between the distance separating the tip of their antennae and their body length is probably one of the largest among ants, and their legs are extraordinarily long as well. Workers of Paratrochina longicornis participate in a type of group hunting. Each individual forages with its long antennae wide open and quickly moves at speeds of 6.3 cm per second, a long and erratic path surrounded by nestmates behaving in the same way and within range of a recruiting pheromone. Workers explore a relatively large area thanks to their long and wide open antennae and their high speed. They can detect prey by contact with successful workers singly capturing and retrieving small prey and seizing larger ones by biting a leg or an antennae. Then they recruit nestmates at short range, and altogether they pin the prey down, limiting the possibility of the prey from escaping. Also, just like Oecophila, P. longicornis workers pin their prey down by a method known as spread eagle, where the workers pull the prey's appendages in different directions, just like a medieval torture rack. Black crazy ant workers will communicate through the, their usage of pheromones. And there are three situations that can be described when the pheromone will be used. The first situation, if individual ants are attacked. The second, if individual ants attack a prey item. And the third, if individual ants encounter a large food resource. Unlike other invasive ant species, black crazy ants are neither territorial nor aggressive to other ant species, and its foraging strategy mostly depends on the speed of the foragers and their ability to immediately recruit nestmates at a given range when they find a food source. This strategy is known as exploitative competition, is in contrast to interference competition used by dominant ants that monopolize resources using either repellents or direct aggressiveness toward competing ants, such as the case of Fidoli megacephala, as we saw a couple of weeks ago. Because exploration by each black crazy ant worker is combined with other nestmates foraging in a similar pattern and all within the range of a recruitment pheromone, altogether these workers perform a kind of group hunting that has not previously been reported. Note that group hunting with short range recruitment is considered to be a more evolved strategy than solitary hunting because it implies cooperation between workers and enables a species to rapidly exploit a greater range of prey sizes or food sources. Black crazy ants actually have trails, unlike what is normally reported. 
but trails for moving toward the nest only. The species is omnivorous. They feed on live and dead insects, honeydew, fruits and many household foods. Crazy ants are especially fond of sweet food. They are attracted to honeydew producing insects in the spring and fall, such as plant lice, mealybugs and scales. Foragers will also collect seeds, and large prey items, like uh, small geckos and others, are carried by a highly concerted group action. They appear to show a strong preference for protein during summer, when they will refuse honey and other sugar baits. The black crazy ant is highly adaptable, living in both very dry and rather moist habitats. Outdoors, it nests in such places as dry leaf litter, plant roots, cavities, under logs or stones, and in soil. While indoors, nests are often found in wall cavities and under stored items. Colonies occur in temporary nests and are highly mobile and will move if disturbed. At 25 Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit and 50 to 70 percent relative humidity, the brood life cycle is as follows. The egg stage lasts between 14 and 19 days. The larval stage lasts between 13 and 23 days. And the pupal stage lasts between 10 and 14 days. And so, the complete cycle of P. longicornis is between 37 and 56 days. Workers are constantly observed, wandering over the piles of brood, carrying larvae and pupae around, even in the absence of external stimuli. This way, the immature pile is dynamic, being constantly revolved, probably enabling the larvae at the bottom of the pile to be fed. Furthermore, revolving the pile may act in maintaining adequate humidity conditions for completing immature development. Parachecrina longicornis has polygene colonies, with nests containing up to 2,000 workers and 40 queens. Reproductives are produced throughout the year in warm climates, but are more restricted in cooler climates. On warm, humid evenings, large numbers of males gather outside nest entrances and wander around excitedly. Workers patrol vegetation and other nearby structures. Periodically, a delayed queen emerges. Wings of queens are removed while still callow, and males were never observed to fly or use their wings in any way. Mating occurs inside the nest or on groupings around the nest entrance. Polygyny, unicoloniality, and reproduction by colony budding are typical characteristics of tramp ant species. And black like crazy ants possesses all these traits, aiding its success as an invasive ant species. In a normal colony, budding occurs during high population levels by which a queen and accompanying workers leave the current ant nest and walk to a new site to form a new colony. Budding can also be coupled with threats like predation. Premature budding is apparently the response of the colony to continue its stress. In some ant species, intraspecific aggression is common in local native populations, but largely absent in exotic populations. In the only published study of intraspecific aggression in Paratrochina longicornis found that colonies from different sites all showed fierce intercolonial aggression. Colonies and individuals from the same location appear to tolerate each other, but they behave aggressively towards individuals from distant sites. Queens do not appear to be responsible for this lack of intraspecific aggression, rather colony odors obtained dynamically seem to influence their behavior. I have tried this theory out myself queens and workers from nearby locations, no more than a couple hundred meters, and all blended beautifully together. But when I mixed another batch of queens and workers from a totally different and distant area, the bigger swarm totally executed the smaller swarm of individuals. So they can be unicolonial, but within certain limits. Regarding reproduction, it has been studied and found that uh, black crazy ants workers arise from classical sexual reproduction whereas queens are clones of their mothers and males are clones of their fathers. Black crazy ants uses an unusual mode of reproduction, acting as a pre-adaptation for situations where inbreeding and bottlenecking could occur. This may be an important factor explaining why this species has been so successful in evading new habitats. I recently caught this species three times, all in separate incursions, and like I said before, the first mixing went just fine, but the second mix went really bad as you can see. I managed to catch these small colonies using my faithful insect aspirator, but not without harm, for they are notorious formic acid users. If you have these ants in your region, I recommend you try to find them nearing the end of winter, beginning of spring, where they will get closer to the surface and hide under stones or slabs to catch up of the sun warmth. 
Well, this is it for this week's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And now, as usual, I come to ask for your support in subscribing, giving a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and see you next week. Be safe. Bye.